sorry if I look a little bit tired. That's because I absolutely am. I was up quite late shooting that reel last night, so I hope you enjoyed it. ProRes is here on the iPhone with some caveats. It's only in Filmic Pro, which I think personally it's one of the worst apps <laughs> ever made. I was ready to chuck my phone at least six times filming all that footage. So I'm more excited to see what happens when ProRes is actually just natively built into the camera app because I'm just simply not a fan of using Filmic Pro. And on top of that, I don't trust the app enough. I think Filmic Pro and the team and all of them are great people. But the app itself, for some reason, has just never been what I want in a camera app. So I've just avoided it at all costs. And on top of that, I just don't fully trust it. I always feel like it's doing something weird with exposure shifting and ISO and all that stuff. I locked everything down. I think I did a pretty good job with it. But that's what ProRes looks like in low light. It's good, but not great. Okay, like it's better than even some Micro Four Thirds cameras that I've seen in low light. And I think that has more to do with the improved sensor and low light capabilities of the phone itself rather than the codec, which we'll get into in a moment. But I think the phone now is just shooting extremely well in low light situations. And ProRes is maybe, maybe just removing a little bit of the artifactness of HEVC and H.265. But I actually don't think it's that much of a difference from the normal codec. I really wanna call this ProRes codec the cringe codec because I feel like everyone thinks it's this like groundbreaking change to mobile filmmaking and I just do not think that's the case. Maybe I'm taking crazy pills, but personally speaking, it's not some groundbreaking shift in how the footage looks. It still looks like an iPhone, which we've talked about on this channel so many times. It's honestly just okay if these phones look like phones. This whole exercise, of trying to make these cameras look like real cameras and we're not just saying, hey, they are already real cameras. I don't, I just personally don't understand it. If it's something you think and you're into, go for it. I find it extremely cringe. I like the fact that phones have their own unique look. I've had zero issues with the built-in codec since like the 11, so the HEVC that even brought last year with Dolby Vision, totally fine with that codec. And if you see it side by side with ProRes, and the 10 bit HEVC, you really gotta be pixel peeping to see a difference. And that being said, even the ProRes isn't perfect. It still looks like smartphone footage. It just looks like really nice smartphone footage. But then if you factor in the ROI on that image, so your return on investment of time and workflow in the production of shooting ProRes with a phone, that's where this whole thing just seriously falls apart for me. First up, let's just talk storage, right? Shot about 80 clips, not even 20 minutes of footage and I used up 84 gigs on my phone. That's absolutely insane. That is not something I would ever recommend. Even if I was shooting a film, I would say, screw that. We're shooting HEVC 10 bud. I'm not grading this stuff to craziness. I'm okay with that. The storage rates are just nuts on these files. For what you get, not worth it in my opinion. And then beyond the storage, the actual workflow of getting the files from your phone to your computer, I was ready to chuck this thing in the garbage because A, AirDrop was only working if I did less than 10 files at a time. So actually just trying to keep track of all that in my mind was driving me nuts and it was extremely slow transferring. So then I went over USB and because this is still lightning, it's a USB-C2 port. So we're talking ancient technology here for transfer speeds on a massive file. So it's like, why are we even bothering? The efficiency and the fun of shooting with a phone is completely gone the minute you shoot ProRes and you have to get into post and edit this stuff. Once it's in the computer, it edits fine and it's great. That's all cool and dandy and fine. But the actual process of getting the files off your phone to the computer, no thanks. Do not feel like touching that ever again. I will play with this again when ProRes comes out on the entire phone itself. So if it's just built into the native camera app, because I just want to see if it changes anything compared to using Filmic Pro. But as it stands right now, I don't think the codec is that much of a game changer. I think it's extremely overhyped. I personally, to you, my audience, do not recommend that you use it. Experiment, try it, play with it. But HEVC is totally fine. I have no issues with it. Let's accept these phones as phones and enjoy them for what they are and have fun shooting with them. Don't get frustrated. Like I got frustrated shooting with my phone. That was an awful experience. If you're at that point and you want to shoot ProRes and you want a great image, Grab a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. It's cheaper than this one terabyte ProRes iPhone 13 Pro Max that you probably need just to store all these files. And the image is gonna be exponentially better than what you're getting out of this phone. This does not solve physics. These are small sensors with small optics. You got terrible flare still at night. And on top of that, it's still a phone. 
It's a smartphone with a really nice codec for no reason. It's like putting truffle oil on a microwave TV dinner. We're just polishing a turd. It's okay to like the phone as it is. That's where I'm gonna leave it. We'll play with ProRes a little bit more when it comes out in a public release outside of Filmic Pro. If you have any questions about ProRes or the footage that I shot or anything at all, I'll see you in the comments. Otherwise, I'm Patrick Tomasso. I'm extremely tired. Probably gonna have a nap now. And uh, you'll see or hear me next time I feel like making a video.